Your MBA has changed. Why? Well, we think uh, the MBA was, the last time we redesigned the MBA was five years ago. And uh, now in these in this days in the European context, I think not why I would change, our MBA has changed, but I would say all, almost all uh, recognized and accredited B MBAs are, are being renewed, are being rethink and be changed. Okay, but if it's, if it's not broken, yeah. why fix it? Well, you know, we have a, we have a professor at the other that is saying if, it, if something works, change it, you know, and he's Frank Ponti, by, by the way. You've had an MBA for 20 years yeah. at IADA. Hmm. How has it changed? Okay, the MBA, yes, yeah, so you said, I mean, it started 20 years ago. We started offering the MBA in Spanish, where we had mainly a Spanish uh, population. We also had people from Latin America. 10 years ago, that was the real change when it became the international MBA. And we started offering the international and the English uh, group of the MBA together with the Spanish group. So this is the evolution from 20 years starting in Spanish, 10 years ago re redesigned totally and focused on, on, the, on the world, not only the Spanish world. And now uh, after a revision five years ago, this year we've been working heavily on, on really repositioning the MBA of EADA. So do I have to be bi to study the MBA? I, I didn't get the question. Bilingual. Okay, okay. Yes, I mean, uh, you don't have to be bilingual. I mean, uh, what we offer is two ways of starting the MBA. You could start the MBA in Spanish, you could start the MBA in English. And then after six months, the last part of the MBA will be offered in English. In order to do that, what we do is uh, we make sure that the Spanish group has uh, an, 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 an good level of English. And during these six months, we will help them to be at the advanced level of English that we need to do the final part. I'm going to come in English yeah. and I'm going to do the first six months in English. What if I never really get good in Spanish? I try, but I just doesn't work for me. Yeah, the, for the English uh, participants or the participants doing the MBA in English, they, uh, they, this is an, an, an additional uh, component that we offer. We think this is uh, an advantage that we want to offer being in Spain but also with a strong connections to Latin America. You don't have to do subjects in Spanish. You'll do this as a language that will help you in your future career. Then in the social life of the MBA where we mix a lot of activities with uh, all the MBA community, you will have people that are Spanish speakers. So in the more, let's say, uh, relaxed uh, area of the MBA, the social life, you could uh, learn and speak uh, Spanish, but the program will be offered in English. As an exchange student in Mexico, yeah. if I really want to get into Latin America, why not go direct? Why come to Barcelona for a year? Yeah, I guess uh, one of the advantages of, of a European program or a program offered in Barcelona, like the, the one that we offer, is that you won't be with only Latin Americans. And actually, uh, there are very few, uh, I don't know how many, actually very few programs in English in Latin America, full-time. So programs over there tend to be part-time for executives. If you come here, you will be, uh, if you come, and, and I'm not talking about IADA, I'm talking in general to a European program or a program in, in, in Bar Barcelona, you will be with people from, exposed to people from all over the world. Faculty members also coming from different parts of the world. So you will learn how to do business in the world and you could be interested in the emphasis in Latin America some others know so it's trying to tailor made which is the whole point trying to 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 personalize the education program that we offer Latin America is a huge mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. do you specialize in some countries or some industries yeah well in Latin America as, as you as you say is very huge I mean we are talking about six six hundred million people over over there in 12 different countries we sometimes tend to think of one Latin American country but this is this is totally wrong even we have two different languages because in Brazil uh, you don't speak Spanish so in the areas or the countries where we are really uh, strong I would say uh, is Colombia Peru Mexico and Brazil. Those are the countries where we uh, work and we have a lot of connections over there. Latin America may be booming. Hmm. Spain definitely is not. Hmm. Again, wouldn't it be better to spend more time really living in that emerging market or in one of those countries you mentioned than being in Spain where, where the economy is suffering? Yeah, I think uh, this is an interesting question no? about Spain. I mean, 
course, Spain is a country that has, uh, has as, as many other countries, as uh, diversity within itself. I would say we are in Spain, yes, we are in a city like Barcelona. It could be as well in Madrid. Barcelona city is in, in good momentum. I mean, there, we last week we, had, we were hosting the Mobile World Congress. You know, we are the capital for the world in mobile. We, we had the CEO of Facebook and the CEO of WhatsApp right the day after it was announced that fa Facebook was acquiring uh, WhatsApp. But may so maybe things are happening here, in the city. Maybe they're coming here because mm. it's cheap. I mean, you can do a conference in, in Barcelona because if, if, if Spain is suffering, then the cost of conference facilities will be lower. I, I, I dare, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, when you look at the prices in a hotel last week, you see that the prices are very expensive. I mean, we're talking about a three-star hotel, six, 600 euros. And they just renewed the agreement and it's going to be here for uh, four other years. So in terms of, 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 of uh, cost of living, I mean, uh, it's not a cheap city, Barcelona. 85% of your graduates are working within three months. Yeah. How many are working in Spain? Yeah, uh, this is interesting. We need to, we need to close the, the probably, if you, if you allow me to close the question, it's like how many, how many international do we have? So we, we have this 90% of our students are from, from outside Spain. Out of this 90, 80% are staying in Spain. You know, so at the end of the day, the answer is 20%. But it's interesting to see that uh, it's a very small proportion of our community that comes from Spain. We, we are focusing on trying to attract people from the world and educate them for the world. In terms of getting into IADA, mm, yeah. I was very interested to see that I can do the GMAT and the other exams mm. and I have to get quite a high grade or I can do IADA's own test. Mm -mm. Is it easier? Well, the, in terms of, of, of the admission test, I think this is a, a dynamic that some of, I mean, several business schools in Spain, I mean, the, the, the good schools, the accredited schools are, are following, if, if, you wanna, if you wanna say. So you always have a GMAT option, but the schools also are offering, and I'm talking about three other business schools, or two other business schools mainly, uh, they are offering also their own admission test. I would say it's not easier at all. The only thing is that you don't have to pay for it, you know, because we assume this, responsibility so you don't have to pay for it and you you cannot prepare it it's based on your background it's based on your grammar grammar and numerical skills i would naturally prefer to just get in yeah and i imagine that the school would prefer people to do its own test yeah. than the standardized gmat or something mm. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, we, it's not that relevant for us whether they do the GMAT or our own test because at the end of the day, it's a combination of different, different, different things that will guide you into the admission. And we always say that the critical, the critical point in the admissions uh, process is the interview. So we need to find a match between your expectations and what we are here to offer. So that's, that's why the interview plays a significant, I mean, a very critical role. And it doesn't really matter whether you have like a super GMAT test, you need to go through the interview. I see that girls are dressed very nicely in Barcelona and the men are also very well turned out. Will I get in if I come in a nice suit or short skirt? We, uh, and this is uh, part of the EADA DNA, you know, we don't really, we don't really care about how you dress. You know, of course, there are some standards, you know, to don't offend anyone. They will, 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 ask, will ask you to, to follow. But we want to uh, base our assessment on the way you dress up. I count on your website 17 scholarships mm -hmm. to the MBA. That's 25% of the class mm -hmm. getting some kind of scholarship. Is it fair on the other students? Well, I think it is. When you look at the scholarship scheme that we have, is always trying to follow this diversity uh, uh, idea, diversity standard. So when we, when we were defining the scholarship scheme, we were trying to give opportunities to all different uh, parts of the world. Because our promise, without people from different parts of the world, won't be accomplished. How much is a scholarship typically worth? Yeah, it's, it's worth around 25% of the tuition fee. And what's the total tuition? The total tuition is 35,500 euros. So the, it's, it's not insignificant, 25% of that? Yeah, we, we, we tend to say that it covers, all, I mean, it covers your, your cost of living in uh, Barcelona city. 
I, I'm confused by the motto, uh -huh. growing your potential. Potential is great, but I want a job. Mm. And we want you to get a job because at the end of the day, we are not here to give you a piece of paper. Huh? We, are help, we are here to help you to change or to advance in your career. This is the ultimate goal of the MBA, change or advance in your career. If you end up uh, having a nice piece of paper with excellent transcript, but no job, we have a problem. I'd like to change and advance. Mm. Uh, I don't want to change or advance. Okay, that's a good point, and, and that's right. You could change and advance, or even create your own business. How, how many of your graduates do that? This is uh, this is uh, growing. I would say is getting close to the twenty percent of our class is is some way somehow starting up a business. And what sectors do they tend to go into, or it's it's diffuse? It's diffuse. Uh, I mean, I guess when they are uh, setting up their own businesses, uh, they are getting more into this uh, something that is rela related uh, to, to to technology. Uh, but when they go for let's say company sector, then it's very 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 diverse. When I set up my own business, yeah. I probably need some help, consultation, yeah. coaching. Does the school provide anything? When I've left, yes, uh, definitely. I mean, we we, we saw this uh, this trend uh, five years ago, when we were giving, we were focusing too much. Well, not too much, but probably too much at that time on career services. It's helping you to get a job, helping you to get a promotion. But then we realized some of our candidates were not using the service, and we were like, well, what's going on? Oh, what, where's the gap? And they were saying, we want to set up my own. I want to set up my own business. And the career services is offering me a job in one of these nice consulting firms. And that was the right momentum to set up the Center for Entrepreneurship. This is a center, is not, not, this center is not the academic part of the entrepreneurship, but it's really connecting you with how to put an idea into reality. So it helps you to define and defend your idea, your, your, your business idea. And then what's very important for that, once you have the idea, you need the money. So also to help you how to put this idea into practice. And we are happy to say that after five years, we, we became even kind of an incubator of companies. And we are helping some ideas, some, some, some startups are being uh, sponsored and, and supported by, by the AI Business School. Consulting is, yeah. is a word that mm. uh, rings in my ear because I see that most of your graduates become consultants. Mm either by function or, or by industry. And historically, this was a consulting business. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm interested in, mm. is consulting still a specialism in IADA, or do you prefer, I don't know, startups? Well, at the end of the day, we, we, it's not about what we prefer. It's about what our candidate, what our participant is willing to do. So it is true that in our DNA, as an institution that was, was, was uh, started as a consulting firm, so in a, in a way it was both, you know, it was a startup and it was in, a, in the consulting services. So we have some credibility in that sense, but it's true that we, we, now we are supporting and giving support in a startup or in entrepreneurship, we are helping them to get into consulting firms. But this could change, and we should be smart enough to detect this change, detect this interest from our candidates in helping them. To look at the new course, mm. you're talking about evolutions. Will I grow a new tail in IADA? Well, yeah, it is interesting debate that we had in, in, in the team that was working on, on this uh, elective evolution POD now even the admissions team is saying POD. What's POD P is paths of development. So what we are trying to say is that yes, you will get the core of an MBA. You need to have it because this is you know something that we have. It's a toolbox that you will need for your career. But at the same time, we want to go beyond that, and uh, we see this by the evolution of the core MBA, and that's why. But it's, 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 it could be, you know, it's, it's a nice, uh, nice discussion we are having in, internally. Well, for me, term and, like the terminology is yeah. worrying because evolution takes millions of years, yeah. and I've only got one. Okay, yeah, that's that's a very good point, and 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 we also think that 
when you once you come to EADA, it's not like you do your education and you stop, you know, doing education for your life and you don't do anything else. So we also even we give you the tools, you put in practice these tools in EADA and after EADA, and we recommend you to get back and to it's like get, getting back to the gym, you know, and don't stop. So the evolution probably in our in the career of our graduates won't take million of years because they won't have million of, million of years of existence but at least they will take you know 30 40 years of their career there are three hmm. tracks whether you call it an evolution a pod or an elective there are three tracks are they mutually exclusive yes they are i mean tracks are you take one or the other and so let, let's look at them because they're they're quite unusually grouped Finance is, is lumped together with energy. Mm -hmm. That's one track. What if I'm great in finance and I'm not very interested in energy? We think you will, you will enjoy anyway in this, uh, in this specialization. We think, I mean, it's a good way of putting all the, extract, the finance concept, uh, concepts and the structure of finance into practice, into a specific sector. You know, a sector that is, 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 is critical you know, energy is critical. You, either you, you end up as an energy executive or you do, not, you do not work in the energy sector. You know, so that's, we take the sector as an example and we, we based our discussions on national companies like Petrobras in Brazil, but also Exxon, Chevron, the, 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 the US uh, multinational companies. So, speaking of which, the, the business trip yeah. for that elective evolution is to Houston, Texas. Right, There's, you go to the university there. That's that's a kind of energy that's not really available in Spain. This, these oil reserves that they have in, in Texas, wouldn't it be better to study renewable energies or wind farms for for the Spanish market? But again, it's, it's back to we teach what our our participant need or will need in the future. And we are educating people that will be managing uh, energy, not structuring. Uh, it's not the structure of the energy, but it's the negotiation, and and and, and so it's, it's a bit uh, different. Hmm. Why structured finance? What's wrong with unstructured finance? <laughs> Interesting. You know, these are the kind of things that academics will tell you and will explain you. So I guess at the end of the day is an academic definition and is a way of uh, proposing something that is appealing and is uh, interesting for the candidates. Global innovation management. Could you put any more buzzwords in the title of this course? Yeah, thank you for, uh, for, for saying that. I mean, it is true that at the end of the day, we, we need also to attract candidates. We need to, to show them that this is not going to be only a place where you will hear and, 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 and receive theoretical knowledge, but that you will be able to apply it and then also to promote and to, and to, and to sell yourself during and after the program. I just, I'm, I'm confused because global has connotations, management has connotations, Innovation has connotations. It's, it's hurting my brain to hold all this together. Where is this elective likely to take me? Yeah, very interesting. At the end of the day, what we want is we want to move from creativity into ideas that will be put in practice. But taking into account the global, global world, the global players, the global opportunities, but at the end of the day, so it's a mix of, it's not, not only nice words, but it's a mix of this global concept with innovation, so put ideas in practice, ideas that you, can, you could sell one day, and be able to manage those ideas in the different phases that they will be living. Customer experience and multi-channel management. Is this something to do with cable TV? <laughs> Very funny. I mean, at the end of the day, yes. Because what we are trying to share is that the days where you were going to a shop and buying uh, a shampoo are over. You know, companies are telling us. I don't know, I, 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 uh, I tried, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you could buy a, the same shampoo by multi different channels, even the TV. You could see the TV uh, program, something that is uh, over there. Uh, and you say, well, that's the one that you, pro you I want to, to buy that one. And you could, 
uh, in Spain we say uh, we have tele tienda, you know, it's a TV shop, tele tienda. I was with a graduate last week and, and he, was, uh, he was sharing with me the fact that in his company he's getting a lot of, a lot of recognition and a lot of uh, opportunities just because he is trying different ways of promoting his, his product. And he started a blog, he started to do some uh, uh, online marketing and instead of being, let's say, called for a meeting saying, what are you doing, you know, in our classical sector, he was, he was totally the opposite. He received a lot of recognition saying, this is what is coming on. I mean, the, the sector has changed. The only way of the doctor deciding which product will be sold, I mean, this is over. So now we need to influence, we need to move the social media, we need to... So it's, 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 it's a multi, uh, as we say, multi-channel, but at the end of the day, the experience of the customer has changed, and we also have to change the way we approach them. This talk of change mm. makes me think of innovation. But innovation is in the title of the other, evolution. And I can't study both. What exactly is the difference between multi-channel management and global innovation management? Well, it is important. I mean, it is, it is impossible to, to, let's say, avoid some kind of overlapping, you know, because they cross. I mean, uh, we, 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 of course, we have a specific approach and a specific outcome, but there will be even cases could be the Google case or in been in Spain the Zara case, you know, uh, this this fair or desigual in the fashion sector. They could be analyzed from a global innovation management perspective and also from a multi-channel customer experience. So I'm I'm not here to say, well no no no, we won't cross the knowledge uh, between the different functional or the different electives. No, no, this is gonna happen. We, uh, we, we are trying to make sure that at the end there is a clear learning outcome for, for the specific uh, track and you will get this. Each of your evolutions has a business trip element associated. Who pays for that trip? The, the trip is included in the tuition fee. And, and, and we have a reason uh, behind this decision, is that this is, this is a core part of the evolution. Actually, the trip has been decided together with the champion of the track. And the champion will make sure that there is a connection and is part of this elective. So that's why we need all our graduates to be going through this uh, business trip, which is an, an academic and a, and, a, and a professional business trip. The core course contains all the usual suspects, marketing management, operations, HR, decision making. Are you just ticking all the boxes in the core course? We, in terms of the way you read that in, 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 in the website, on the brochure, I would say, yes, why not? Yes, we need to make sure that you, need, you have the basics uh, and, and the fundamentals of management. What we would like to say that we do different, and I'm not, I mean, I, I guess our graduates or our students, our participants are the ones that are saying that, is that is the way we do it, which makes a we, we, which makes a little bit different this this place to other business schools. You teach a course in self management. Mm. Will you cure my addiction to ice cream? Well, if uh, this is uh, blocking your career, we will help you with that. If this is not connecting, is not connected to your professional career then we will say, why don't you go to a professional? You have a professional ice cream blocker? No. Oh, okay. I'll have to go to my therapist. <laughs> um, but you, you do this core course mm -hmm. and it's, as you say, you want to cover the, uh, cover the boxes. Mm -hmm. It's part of the accreditation deal, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah. But shouldn't you rather focus in your core strengths to do with people management and, and, and soft skills? But we do it, we do it, we do it, and we do it through a very intense and, and, and a very important for us critical program, which is this uh, personal development program that is uh, mandatory and is, is a critical part in our MBA. Is, there's a department called people management at IADA. Hmm. That, that caught my eye because it's different from most business schools. Do I get to manage people? during my MBA? Are they guinea pig people for me to practice on, like a puppeteer? Well, we, uh, 
we think that the skills of managing people will be with you, I would say, even from the first day, the opportunity, the chance. We won't tell you, okay, you are the boss, or you are the leader, or you are the coordinator of this group. This will be there, you know, the group will define, the group dynamics, you will be uh, in a stable team with people from different cultures, different countries, different experiences, and things will happen over there. You will be exposed to real projects where you have to hand in a real outcome. Who is the leader of this project? I don't know. Do you want to be a leader? You have the opportunity. We won't teach you what is leadership. We'll put you in practice. We'll put you in a situation where you need to really become a leader or influence other colleagues. Tell me about where we're sitting now. Hmm. Well, we are in our residential training center. This is, and we always say this joke, because it's a place that is called Coibato. Coibato is uh, looking, I mean, over there, we can see that, but it's looking at the Montserrat mountain. This is a training center located uh, 30 minutes far from the city, where we have our classes and our core MBA. We come here to the residential training center to do the personal development program. What, what's the name exactly of the... It's Coibato. And it's Coibato. interesting because uh, at the beginning of the year, our obviously people from you know, 30 different countries, they, the way they pronounce Coibato, you can, I mean, you name it, uh, the way you do it. By the end of the year, I always say this, this kind of joke is that make sure that you're, you know, when you explain that you've been doing these modules in Coibato, that the other part understands what it is. Because you end up talking about Coibato like this would be New York. Like everybody knows what is New York and nobody knows what is Coibato. But it's something, you know, it's something here that, 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 that stays with you. When we see them around the world in our regional chapters, is, it's impossible to not uh, be in a conversation about what I experienced, the activity, my, you know, the, the, the friendship that I created in this training center we have. You mentioned New York. It sounds a bit more like Vegas in the <laughs> sense that what happens in Coivato stays in Coivato. It could be as well. I mean, we're isolated here. It's personal development. Do relationships start? Well, definitely. I mean, we think uh, starting an MBA, the way we start, makes a huge difference for our experience. I mean, the very first week, you are here for a week where you're getting to know each other, you are getting to know the rules of the game, the way we will work, but the first activity, you have an outdoor activity. So you'll be in this uh, nice area and doing an activity with people that you don't even remember the name. And you will be asked to, to touch each other, to do, and, and to get a result. So this makes a difference when you are back in the city center, you are in your classes, in your classical classes with the case method, etc. And, and you already know each other, you, 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 you really break the ice and we then, we sustain this because we come back four times, when in total is four times in this training center. You start with touching and you end with a trapeze jump. Could you explain that to me? Well. We start with touching because we think this uh, team teamwork and managing team, working in teams, multicultural teams, is important that our participants, they really understand that they are in a place where they need to accept others and others will accept them. And if something happens, because it's important, I mean, I mean, conflict happens. Oh, yes. When you have the Mexican candidate and the German candidate and they have to meet and uh, one is uh, probably not even on time, well, real life starts. And the end, when we get into the end, oh, so we know each other, everybody knows each other, so the, totally the, 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 the dynamics are very well formed, and this is the time for you. So this activity that we do in, in, a, in, 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 a, in a tree, 10 meters high, simulates you and your future. Has anybody ever broken an arm? Well, not, not that much, but something, uh, something who could happen, you know, so, but this, of course, is, is totally under control. So we have the academic member and, and, and a special monitor that is uh, leading the activity from this point on. What I really want to yeah, know yeah, is sorry. how much personal attention will I get? Well, we, we always say that in EADA, if you have a bad day, 
will know that and we'll talk about that without you. We, you know, the staff, the program management, the professors, if you have a bad week, we will call you and we will tell you, we need you back. Because the, the whole thing, the whole IADA style, you know, this learning by doing, we need you. So if you are not motivated, if you are not working hard, we'll need to help you to be back because we need you in class. Professor won't tell you everything, professor will ask you everything. So if you are there and you are not really into it, we need to do and find a way that you will be back with us. There's a lot of outdoor activities, different arrangements of groups and role playing. I love role playing. What kind of roles do we play? Okay, well, we try to simulate situations that will happen in real life. So imagine that we have to do a negotiation activity. So we will give you a role, we will give you a, a situation that the other part will not know. The other part will have another situation and we'll put them in practice. We'll put them working together to find an agreement and reach an agreement. And we will film this activity. So because when we go for simulations, role plays, we follow the Kolb method, which the idea is that... Which method? The Kolb. The Kolb method, basically what we do is we, we, we action, reflection, and then conceptualization. So, but we want to put you in practice, in action, without telling you much. You have your role, I have your role. Okay, negotiate, you have 20 minutes to reach an agreement. And then the professor is following the session. When we do that, we will reflect on the activity. Okay, how did you feel? Well, you know, he was very tough, he was very strong, he was, well, it was very easy. You, you never know, no? Reflect on how was the activity. And then we will get back to the negotiation class. So, but instead, instead of starting saying, okay, when you want to negotiate, you need to start by blah, blah, blah. No, we put you in action. That's what we want to do. Is it responsible just to start with an action? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because this is a simulation. This is, is it responsible to put a pilot, you know, future pilot in an airplane, you put them in a simulator. So, okay, yes, he could, in the simulator could fall and could have a problem, but not in real life. So we want them to fall if they have to fall in EADA and not in real life. I'm just thinking about the mentality, which is, there's an, the other schools of thinking say, well, first take stock of the situation, think about it, and then act. And you're saying, no, act and then reflect. Yes, we say that you, it's a combination, but we want this act first and reflect uh, later because many times in business life you will feel and you will be faced to these situations that are and, and more and more now is what is happening in the world. So you need to find a solution to a problem that you never had. So there is no theory for this problem. When the problem will come, you, will, you should do A, B or C. So this is what we're trying to do when we talk about this simulation. Of course, it's not the whole program about simulation because if you want to do a finance class, you first need to learn the, 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 the concepts and, and then be able to apply it. So we are not the whole MBA is simulating and, and then reflecting. But when we talk about your personal development and the personal skills, yes, we want you first act, then reflect and finish with the concept. You talk about positive impact. Mm. I'm here to do business. Can I just skip the social project? You cannot. You cannot. It's part of the other proposal. But is it just for show? I mean, does it really help anybody? We, it's interesting because we've been learning this experience by, I mean, we always say learning by doing. In the other, we also learn by doing. So we put the project uh, more than five years ago in, in practice. We were following the, the, the Global Compact and, and the United Nations uh, guidelines. In paper was excellent. In reality, we had a you know kind of a reality shock or check, you know, because at the end of the day, you need to make something that has oh yes this this uh, responsible spirit, but that also is interesting for participants and there is a clear learning for them. So after these five years of experience, we have learned how to put something that will help you to develop not only your social spirit, which is not, not the purpose of the, pro the project, is we want to develop your entrepreneurial skills, your teamwork skills, your leadership skills, but with an end, final end, that will support an NGO 
or will support some people that don't have these resources. So doing good means helping businesses that don't make a profit or NGOs or... No, basically it is very important. I mean, even the objective in the social project, you need to make profit. You need to make profit because if you do the whole show and you are not able to support this NGO or this project that is here uh, with us, you won't get the, 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 the final outcome. So NGO doesn't mean losing money. Actually, an NGO without you know, being stable won't succeed. So we, we are here also to make sure that the project has a positive outcome. How do you grade my social project? Okay, there's a combination. So, but there is a lot of emphasis on the final day. You know, there is a final day. This is like, okay, you have to do a lot of things in the, in the, in the way to get into the final day, where the final day you put in practice and you show to the society what you have achieved. Okay, and uh, we have uh, for this part actually is a 40% of the grade is on the final day. So what is your, uh, how much money did you get for this project? How many people did you engage? So etc. all the, the details depending on the social project per year. So the final day is critical and then we evaluate as well the process and the document. But the document is not as important as, 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 the, as the exhibition. The document is just a piece of paper that will, is a summary that will, will, will give us a written information of what you have done and achieved. So we'll evaluate the final day, we'll evaluate the process, the group dynamics and the final document. ISADE also has moved outside of Barcelona. They're up in the hills of San Cugat. Um, if I want to get out of Barcelona, would I not just apply to ISADE? Yeah, I mean, our position is good or bad, it's different. I mean, we have our city center campus, which is, as you can, you can see, I mean, five minutes walking distance from Plaza Catalunya. So it's in the middle of uh, Barcelona. Very, very uh, crowded and a lot of people. And then we have our residential training center. So we do not have our students, our participants outside the city. We have it in, in the city. And what we do is we come here on a residential base uh, four times within the program. So the idea is that every week, uh, every every term, we start with a kickoff meeting, kickoff week, that we do it on a residential uh, basis and we do it here in the training center. So we mix, we tend to say, and, and this is according to our participants, the best of both worlds. So we are city center, students enjoying the city of Barcelona, but also when we need them to get them out of their day-to-day -day and, 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 and city life, we take them to the mountain, as we say, uh, and we take them to Coibato. There's a claim about high performance. If you were a condom, would you be ultra strong or ultra thin? Wow. I never thought about that. I would say we would be secure. Get the job done. But what really, what does it mean, high performance? I mean, they're, they're buzzwords that anyone can say. Is it a description of how I come into IADA, how I leave? Yeah, we think that it's not only what you have here, but also what you have here, you know? And we're trying to do this mix again and again. For instance, this week, we are hosting the annual executive meeting, the alumni meeting. The topic of the meeting, where we are hosting more than 1,000 graduates from IADA, is high-performing leadership. So it's something that and we are partnering with the high-performance center that Spain has in Barcelona for sports athletes. So we see that business and, 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 and leadership and business administration is, all, is also like in a sports world. It's not only to be one day the number one, it's to, to stay there. You know, and in order to be there and to stay there and remain there, you need to have this balance. So that's what we are trying to offer and help our graduates to make sure that they're ready, not for the short run, but also for the long run. Can you really perform when you're high? <laughs> well, yes, you could. So what we, we should help these 
person probably is to think about his possession. So it's not like, uh, well, you have the opposite, no? This one that is smoking and the other one that is totally against that. We don't want to, to turn this one into this one. We want you to be better. So you don't have specific uh, view of the kind of profile of student? It, it's about maximizing everyone's own potential? You don't mind if he likes this or he's like that? Yes, we want to maximize your potential. Let me, let me, let me sh share an example of, and I, I know that we are here, we don't have that mobility, but it's like, because people are saying sometimes, you know, what about uh, this growth? I mean, how do you measure how, how everybody is growing? How can you all, I mean, at the end of the day, we want to personalize and try to uh, maximize and, and, and make sure that you grow and that you are better by the end of the program. Can I do an activity with you? Yes, please. Could you raise your hand? A bit higher? A bit higher? Hail Caesar. Higher, 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 and higher. Ow. And I've done this activity in different world, uh, different parts of the world, too. even higher. Really? And then now you should stand up and do it, you know? All right. So okay. you don't need to do it. But this is what we're trying to say. Probably it's different for you than for me. But we want to help you to get your maximum. I think I may have just strained a muscle in my back. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my potential. That was the limit. Um, how do you teach freedom of thinking? We don't teach freedom of thinking. We, this is the value number one at the other. We say and we try to pray with that that we have this freedom of thinking. So this is an institution that has, you know, that, that welcomes all cultures, that welcomes all, all ways of thinking and that help you in your way of thinking to get the best out of you. What if I have very, very strong religious beliefs? Welcome. If I'm homosexual? Welcome. I, I like Spain's anarchist history and I'm here for that? Well, as long as you don't offend anyone and you respect the rest, welcome. Bad breath? We'll help you to get better. Okay, thank you. How do you keep alive the alumni spirit? We, we say, you know, the AIDA spirit. You know, and, and it's true that when you have uh, people from all over the world that they 80% of them will, will fly and will go around the world. We organize regional chapters, regional meetings. So we have around 15 different uh, meetings around the world where we meet, we, we get together. The last one was in Mexico. I was over there and a group of 45 graduates from different masters, MBAs and different years. Uh, we went together and actually it was very nice because it was organized by one of our alumni in, in a company that is called uh, Privalia. What do your alumni do together? Yes, I mean, we don't force much. This is happening. I mean, we want them to get together. We want them to get to know each other, to network and according to their interests. Then is when we say to ourselves, and that's something that we share with the team, is that when something is working is when we are not there and it's happening. And we had a lot of, a lot of uh, real life experiences where they, thanks to one meeting that the other said, okay, let's get together in this place this day, afterwards, and we have a magazine for them, so we follow their lives, uh, we see that a business, you know, they created, a, they joined forces, they created a, a company together. So that's what we, we try to make them feel part of the community, part of the school, get together, and then one-on-one -on -one basis we help, they need help, or we try to force and help them to get to know each other. In the course, in terms of my learning, what's the optimal balance of how much I learn from the professors and how much I learn from my fellow students? Well, that's a very good question because in our case, this, uh, I would say, is very well, well balanced. In some subjects, even from your, from your fellow uh, participants, you will even learn more than from your professors. And in some others, will be mostly focused on the professor. But we don't, we don't dare to say that you will, you will learn as much as you learn from your professor, you will learn it from your colleagues. Okay, that was, a, hmm. that was an easy one. What Thank was you. the Arda doing in 1957? Was founded in 1957. 
Under Franco's dictatorship. Yes, and it was founded by a woman, Mrs. Irene Vázquez, which is our honorary president, but together with uh, Don Arturo Alsina. And they were operating under a Francoist dictatorship? Oh, yes. Who were they working for? Who were they helping? They were independent consultants. So they started the business in a very difficult time for, for, for Spain and under the leadership of Mrs. Irene Vázquez. So when we see nowadays uh, that schools are getting into this uh, leadership, personal development or soft skills, we are very happy to, to hear that because the school by origins was funded as a consulting that was specifically focused on that. So Mrs. Irene Vázquez is a clinical psychologist. So 54 years ago, the idea was to help organizations to achieve their goals but through their people. And it's something that it is very, I mean, you, you, you feel it and our, but, but it, because, because it comes from the origins, you know, and we believe on that. The training center where we are 25 years ago was acquired, not as a nice uh, uh, equity, if you want to call it, but the right place to put in practice our methodology. Surely in business, people come and go, and the process is what matters, mm. not the people. Yeah. And this is what we would like to say as well. You have professors that have, you know, new professors and old professors, but something is here. And when the new ones are coming, they know that this way of teaching, this methodology, this uh, 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 for participant first, you know, and priority on this one-to-one -one education, something that you need to, you need to cope with that. But I'm saying something a little bit different, okay. which is in an organization, any organization, people can have to be replaced. People die, people move countries. Surely the processes in the organization, the, f the functions, yeah. are more important than the individual people inside. Mm -hmm. Yes, I truly believe on that. And that is like uh, when you want to even reposition the program, you need a multi multi-diverse team, team uh, people in, from the program management, but you need people from the admissions department that are talking every day with the candidates. You need people from the career services, you need graduates, you need companies. So, of course, we need to get not only one idea, but also, you know, the whole stakeholder analysis. Are you a business or a school? If we have to decide, we are a business.